So you're just going in for your procedure, how do you feel? Uh, I feel a bit nervous, but uh, I kind of feel like mixed emotions, like nervous, but also like blessed to be able to be doing something about my condition. Because I know in other countries they wouldn't be rewarded this. So I feel, I feel, yeah, it's mixed. It's like nervous, but also blessed because this is like a good thing that I'm doing rather than just ignoring it. What is it that you have? I have um, abnormal cells and they've gone to the second level. Um, there's three levels, I think C1, C2, C3. Um, I've got C2, which means that my cells have spread. Um, the doctors don't know which cells I have. They could be cells that are not like dangerous or they could be like cells that could develop into cancer. It's really hard to tell. But the deeper they go, the more dangerous it means. It means it's spreading. I guess it's acting a bit cancerous. Uh, I mean, I'm not a doctor, I can't tell you. But basically, it's not good if it goes to C2. So they cut it out. All right, well, good luck. So, so they're going to burn me today. They're going to burn my insides and cut out the bad cells. So, um, yeah, and I've got my support of, of my family and friends. I'm not alone. So um, I think I'll be okay. Fingers crossed. Good luck. Thank you. So, how did it go? Um, it went really, really well, I think, because I think I have a really good nurse. I think my nurse who did my my procedure, I think she's, like, really amazing. How did your vagina feel after? Uh, my vagina didn't actually feel anything because they numbed it. They used, like, a, like a local anesthetic, I guess. But they used an injection, and they said that it's the same one that you use when you get your tooth removed. Um, so it's an injection, but I'll be honest because I had my wisdom tooth removed about um, a month or two months ago Something like that. It was very recently and that injection they gave me was mud like mazzoline and that was my mouth um, And when it was in my vagina, I don't know if because it's because of her. I actually have no idea, but I, I definitely felt something entering me that was thin But in terms of pain, the pain was very manageable. I'll say it was, it was like a three so um, I have no idea why. I feel like she put iron, I, I, iodine on it before. It's like a brown liquid and it helps her see the cells through her binoculars and stuff. She has to put that on it so she can see them like moving and whatever. And once she put that brown liquid on, um, I, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I feel like it does do something to the body in terms of numbing because that injection it wasn't as painful as like for instance with my tooth it just honestly it wasn't that bad and she said that was the worst of the pain but yeah how much of it was it taken out your how many cells were taken out okay so basically when you have what i have which is um abnormal cells right in your cervix which is unfortunately something that you get from having sexual intercourse um so when you have that they you, there's 13 strands um, there's 13 strands of the virus that affect your like your cervix and some strands are like they're not dangerous um, and they're not harmful to the body but in the early stages it is difficult to detect whether the strand you have is dangerous or not there's 13 different types of strands people who are i want to say under the age of maybe 31 32 who have got injected with the jab um they can fight two out of the 13 viruses 
people who are a lot younger, I'm not sure the age, I'm just going to say ballpark 21, because she told me it was the new injection that kids are, that people are getting now. It could be even younger than 21. I don't know if it's something that was literally created two years ago. I have no, no clue. But the, apparently the younger lot have an, an, uh, a jab, an injection that fights off um, 9 out of 13 of the viruses. So they're much like better off or whatever. Um, I just missed mine, like the year below mine is the one that got the jab or well, the the year below mine got the injection so i just missed it literally by a year but apparently so with my body what happens is i had the virus was in me and usually they let you live with it and they monitor it over six months or a year they monitor the virus and they check on you every six months to a year because apparently your body can naturally, apparently your body, not apparently, your body can fight off the virus naturally the same way it fights off a cold or, you know, like when you had like, you know, I'm going to say Ovid because I know they don't like that word on YouTube. Your body can fight it off naturally, especially if your immune system is great and, you know, you're, you're healthy, stress-free, eating well. But, um, so that's why they check on you six months later, a year later because you can clear the virus. But I wasn't, I obviously either haven't cleared the virus or it's done too much damage because my cells have gone to level two there's three levels and if it stays at level one or surface one they, they they don't worry too much and they leave you but once it goes to level two or three they get quite worried because once it hits level three it can then develop into a cancer over you over the years so this is all preventative to, to, to cervical cancer so they cut my they cut she cut cells out which is obviously the, the damage the virus did. She cut the cells out. Hi guys, so I decided to put a graph or like a diagram to show you how the different levels of sin, the sin virus can work. So if you look at this diagram, it shows you that how your cells should look when they're normal. So when they're normal, you will just have normal cells and everything will look nice and healthy. And then you can see in the second diagram, sin one, you can see that there are a few abnormal cells, but this is mild and it's nothing to be alarmed with. And your body can naturally fight off this virus and it goes away. Then you see sin two, which is the stage I'm at where there's actually quite a few more abnormal cells and the cells start to just like they look they look abnormal they look unhealthy and they look like they're growing and then when you get to severe the severe dysplasia which is sin three you can see the cells taking over and there's quite a few of them and it's starting to look quite worrying and then the last stage was invasive um car kinoma that's when you know the cells have become a cancer i mean i'm not gonna lie this type of diagram really really freaked me out and it really scared me because i didn't i hadn't seen what my mind looked like in a in a sort of diagram art artistic form and now i've seen it it's like oh my gosh this is so this is so worrying uh if you are sin one sin two or sin three i want you guys to try and obviously you go to the doctor and see what you can do to to be healthy but don't worry too much because there there are loads of people who have been able to fight um the virus off by just boosting their immune system because you're supposed to be able to boost your immune system and then naturally fight off the virus and then your doctor or your nurse can cut off the the bad cells and then maybe your body can just heal back to normal so don't don't uh don't panic too much but just be aware that your lifestyle may be contributing to the fact of why your your body can't fight off the virus so things like smoking things like drinking alcohol excessively things like not sleeping things like stress the food you eat and things like that can um can um help your immune system so just keep that in mind when you look at this diagram this one is more alarming because of how they've drawn the virus um but when you look at this diagram it just it shows you how how um the chances of you clearing the infection on your own like your body fighting it and also i think um with the procedures that the doctor and the nurses can give you so if you're at sin one and sin two you have a 90 percent chance of fighting the infection if you're at sin three you have a 70 percent chance um so the, you know the chances are high so that's why i don't want anyone to be alarmed but it's something that you shouldn't ignore either because at the end of the day there's still a chance that your cells are cancerous and so that's why that the doctors need to monitor you and make sure that they they um 
they cut it out and do everything they can to prevent the cells from becoming a cancer. Um, I didn't obviously feel any of that, but I did see when she put like a cotton bud in me, I saw loads of soaking blood and I smelt it. It stunk because after she cut everything out, she then needs to like almost scab your inside. So she used like this warm stick, this really hot stick and it like burns your, your, your insides and your cells. It burns, it burns, it burns it. And you can actually smell burning flesh. I recommend people to do this procedure. I recommend everybody over the age of 25. Um, I'm not 100% sure what age they, if they've lowered the age now. I, I know some people advocate for it to be done younger because they have like cervical cancer in their family and stuff. So they want to do it from 21 and stuff. Um, if you look at someone like Jay Goody, she actually had full on cervical. If you look at somebody like Jay Goody, she actually had full on cervical cancer when she was 28. So 25 does, for, to some people, seem a little bit late. So I think a lot of people want it to be tested by, you know, 21 or 18. But obviously everyone needs to get tested. Um, like I said, a lot of people have asked me online if there's symptoms. There are no symptoms. You don't have a painful vagina or it's not like chlamydia or gonorrhea. This is this is to do with cells. You know, cancer is something that develops and grows in your body. This is This is not discharge or smelly but it's not like that you literally wouldn't know that you could look healthy and as fit as normal and you wouldn't know i do know when she because she, she kept she asked me a lot of questions like about lifestyle in terms of like do i smoke and things like that because when you when you like don't smoke or you eat healthy and stuff you tend to have a better chance of fighting the virus off because you have a better a better immune system maybe also being stress-free so <laughs> I don't know if you're in a toxic relationship or you have a toxic job you have to consider that that stress can affect so many things including your health um i personally sleep all these type of things i personally feel like i do have a stressful like nine to five and i also feel like um i just need to be take care of myself drink my vitamins and all that kind of stuff so i can fight the virus um, one more thing I want to say is I actually, when I was 25 and I got tested initially, I, I already had a virus in me. So it's very difficult to pinpoint who did it to you because you're supposed to get tested every three years. So you have to understand at 25, you might have got the virus at 18, you might have got at 19, you might have got at 21. It's very difficult to pinpoint who gave it to you unless you've been with the same partner. Unless you've been with the same partner from like literally 16 years old and you've been with the one person, then you know it's him. Um, I'm, I googled whether men can get tested and men can't get tested unless they are at risk of risk of getting anal, like an anal cancer. And they can get anal, you can get anal cancer through sex apparently as well, the cells and whatever. The thing is, the reason I just want to um, advocate for having one partner, because I've really thought about this. My nurse explained that your body can clear it up on its own, right? So let's just say, because I was confused because I thought to myself, if your partner, he's loyal to you, she's loyal to you, but they have a rock. So I was really like wondering to, with the virus more to do with like, it's very, I thought, I was thinking to myself, it's quite, it can be quite complicated because um, men can't be tested. So you're, you're, so let's say you have a partner and he's a carrier and he's actually loyal to you, he doesn't cheat on you. In my head, I was thinking, even if you have this procedure and he's a vir he has the virus, he's just going to keep giving it back to you. So in my head, I thought, this is very scary. So like, are you supposed to just be celibate or just, I don't know, have, I, I don't know. It just, it wasn't making sense to me. So I, I thought about it for a long time. And what my nurse explained is that not to trivialize it but you your body can fight off this virus the same way it fights off a cold so you know with colds once this um this is something i learned through my sister because she's really smart there's there's many 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 different like um variations and strands of um the cold like the cold virus or the flu so the reason that you, you get sick almost every year or every other year or the reason people get sick over and over again is because a virus can like a virus can mutate and it can develop and be and it can it basically it can become a different strand it, it can so there's i don't know the number I'll, I'll try and put it in the video but there's a lot of variations of the flu and a cold 
um, but the one you had last week or last month, when once your body fights off, your your body um, f f um, creates immunity to that strand and that particular virus. So that's why once you've been sick, in theory, if you pass it on to your sister or your brother, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't get sick with that same virus because your body has now has the immunity to fight that virus off because it's created the antibodies to fight that virus off. So when it comes to um, your vagina if somebody passes your boyfriend passes you the same virus now that your body has created antibodies to fight that virus it is okay to stay with that partner because now your body will react as poorly as it did the first time so actually it actually now to me makes sense why one why one partner is, is, is a good thing however the more promiscuous you are this is why god doesn't want people to be promiscuous and have loads of partners the more promiscuous you are, the more you... Or I don't want to say the word promiscuous because it sounds judgmental. The more partners you have, the more likely like your partner can be picking up or exposing you to different strands of the, the virus. So what happens is now because your body can fight off one, day 13, so he can expose you to a different one or a different one. And remember, some of them are not dangerous. Some of them are cancerous. So... Um, it's just something, it's just food for thought. Um, I don't want you guys to freak out and think, oh my God, I should dump my boyfriend um, because... I just thought it'd be useful for me to put the research I've done about um, how to boost your immune system and how to fight the um, HPV virus into this video as well. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, so you guys can also do your own research. But I just thought it'd be useful for me to put what I found in here. Obviously, you have to eat well, eat your veggies, eat your fruits, eat your, your, your dairy, your meat, so you can get all your nutrients. If you can go organic, go organic. But also, vitamins are important. Um, multivitamins are important because they're kind of like balanced and they have everything you, you need in them. Don't go for the cheapest multivitamins because some multivitamins are not as effective as others. So try and go for ones that have, you know, good um, reviews and, and have more minerals and more vitamins the more vitamins they have the better um you need to sleep you need to rest you need to be stress-free if you've got a stressful job a stressful relationship you need to really assess these things folic acid is important apparently and i've also seen research about mushrooms being helpful for curing it um i think the general thing here is just to get your immune system to be top tier and for you to be stress-free and happy and then your body or fight the virus and you'll be fine so it's better to do this now than to wait and get cancer and be crying so just look after yourself sleep don't don't always be up you know what i mean on 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 tiktok go to sleep rest if your job is stressing you leave your job um when every time you have you go to a restaurant try and think you know what i'm gonna have a salad on the side just do little things to make your immune system better anyway guys hope you're happy and healthy from the first time that you got the letter to say that you were positive with HPV, was did you consider it as an STD or was it something that you could share with your friends and family because it's not something to be ashamed about? Me, How did you feel? Me personally, I am not somebody who's very, um, I'm very expressive. I'm a big like panicker person. So the minute I got that letter, I'm sc screaming to my mother, oh, I'm dying! I'm dying! Jesus is Lord! Jesus is Lord! I'm Bro, I'm, I'm going to keep it up, guys. I'm not going to tell you what I had yet, but I had one curable STD in my life. So my mum, the, 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 the outwa in the outfit of my sister, I call my mum. Um, I am very open with my family and I, I've actually got, a, which is what's, what's really worrying, I've got, I've got a lot of messages from girls who maybe because of how their mothers and fathers perceive them, they protect them by not telling them the full story of, of things like this. I know girls who have literally DM'd me and told me they've only told me, they haven't told anybody, no, that's not acceptable. You need to... Your, your mother loves you and understands that you are human and she will I, I think some people think their parents will judge which will judge for a minute but what does she, she think you're doing as a young person you can uh, what you guys need to understand is you can get this the first time you have sex 
it's not about being promiscuous the only reason i'm encouraging you not to be promiscuous is because the less the less people you do it with the just the chances are lower but it's just a chance you can still get it the first time you you have someone or the fifth time but the more you're just everywhere 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 is the more you're risking it every time every time you drive a car there's a risk something's gonna happen every time you open your legs guess what there's a risk you're gonna happen even in marriage okay because you don't you can't control nobody but yourself i'm not here to scare you but my point is try and just be a bit more um just try and be a bit more like think about your decisions one thing i want to say to you guys and you might find this weird let me tell you the biggest regret i have and i don't this i'm not trying to be disrespectful but i just want you guys to think about this because especially young people i think we we all glamorize certain types of boys let me tell you something yeah there is l's with dating mr popular and there's l's with dating mr handsome and mr money man don't don't get me wrong me like it's very desirable especially like, i love a money nigga like what are you talking about i love a money nigga yeah give me the money yeah i love that stuff but at the same time sometimes you have to like think maybe the money guy who's tall and got a big schlong every girl wants him and it's just you have to consider these things because it's your life sometimes go f if you want money man compromise and he has to be maybe he's four foot and he's ugly as fuck and he thinks you're queen but at least he he, he worships you and he ain't gonna step out i'm telling you guys it's, it might sound stupid but with life and, and age comes wisdom yeah it's not worth it dating mr mr popular I'm that guy that guy like what's that what's that do for you then you are here at different hospital because you dated a hoe you know what i mean because you risked it you might have been a good girl but what about the people you're dating? Every time you date someone and they 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 do a thing with they do a thing with and they bear back two hundred other women. Guess what? You're sleeping with two hundred other women too. It's just facts. And those two hundred women who slept with um, two hundred other men. Guess what? Your body counts now a thousand. Maybe not physically, but I'm talking about your internal body. Yeah, you have to think about how science works. It's not about Oh my body can't just speak, but your body can't just speak. But you're dating Mr. Popular, you're dating, you're dating rapper, rapper, you're dating footballer, bear backing footballer, bear backing rapper, bear backing. So your body count inside, maybe not externally, but your body count in your insides is it might as well be 1,500 because this guy is exposing me to all these women. These women after the club, maybe she didn't wash her noon, so she's exposing it's just. Or she's got the cells, she's passed it to him. He's got 700 um, viruses in him. And then it's just disgusting, bruv. It's disgusting, fam. I'm, I'm, being, I'm keeping it a buck with you. So sometimes, yeah, if you're in a relationship right now, you know your guy's cheating on you. You need to you need to think about, even if you're okay with it, and you're kind of like, oh, maybe he'll behave one day. You need to you need to consider, like, if you want to stay with someone, all I'm saying at the very minimum is use a condom. If you, if you know someone's is capable of sleeping around use a condom if you know someone's capable of cheating on you use a condom that's the best advice i give you if i went back to my younger me there's a lot of guys i wouldn't date there's a lot of guys i wouldn't date can you get hpv from not having sexual intercourse according to my nurse you can get hpv from not having sexual intercourse because apparently you can get it from skin to skin contact so that means possibly rubbing stuff um, and being close up. Kissing? I don't really. I don't think you can get HPV from kissing. It said skin to skin contact, so I believe your genitals, your your genital area, has to touch someone else's genital area. I want to make something very clear because I know a lot of girls have this. Most of the viruses are not harmful. Very clear. Like most of the viruses are not harmful. And this is just a preventative, preventative care they provide so that yours doesn't become cancer. But you don't want to ignore it and be that one person. The only reason I'm talking about it is because I'll be real with you guys. I'm not ashamed of anything I've ever done in this life. I'm a, I'm a normal lass. I'm a normal girl. Um, I, I feel like I do normal stuff. Um, I think I, the, some of the decisions I make, yeah, they're poor, they're good, they're bad. But I don't see myself any different from most the average woman 
so I feel like if I'm the average woman then then it, it can just happen to anybody um, you just never know what cards your life is dealt sometimes you're totally innocent and you live life righteously and you get you get a bad card so I, I'm just I will never be ashamed well ashamed of what like I know who I am and I know the decisions I've made and I know where I went wrong and that's why I'm telling you guys where I went wrong and I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes I've made don't I know I didn't I know I didn't expose myself to this but I know I, I, I possibly was with someone who exposed me to it due to them being um Due to them being a bit like reckless, I, that, that's what I believe. I, but I can never prove that, but that's just what I believe. So I just want you guys to make better decisions of who you expose yourself to. If you have HPV, can you pot and you're pregnant? Can you pass it on to your kid? Uh, if you have HPV, I don't know the answer to this. Do you? I know that you can. It doesn't ex affect your fertility. Can I say that? Uh, so HPV doesn't affect your fertility, so you can still get pregnant. But once they've cut out the cells, it does mean that you may have a premature birth. So you may give birth earlier than usual. But it doesn't affect um, your chances to give birth. To be honest with you, once you've had this procedure, it says that it has a 95% success rate. And um, your body, once your body... At this At the rate I... At the, stage i am now i just have to fight off the virus i've got and apparently that's completely that's what should happen and that's completely normal um so to be honest with you if i use condoms or i i don't slip my hand <laughs> in theory i will heal and be um I'll, I'll be fine and i shouldn't i shouldn't get cervical cancer um, what is worrying for me, and I guess it's something I always wonder, which is what I ask my nurse, is they, they start to test you at 25. Jade Goody obviously dies at 28. So what worries me is that if you start testing at 25, I, I didn't know, well, obviously it's common sense, I just didn't know th three years can be that detrimental to, to someone's health. Three years insane to me how, how does i just don't get it so you get tested at 25 and, you, and then three years it's just crazy to me which just makes it just you know just makes it more i want to say something as well that i've missed i actually will have been getting letters for two years yeah i've been getting letters for two years and i've ignored all my letters um because i don't like hospitals uh, or a lot of us don't so i'm kind of i'm lucky that it, it, it was on me level two i ignored it for two years i just get letters every um, three months you know they care they want you to freaking get tested um and i want to make something very clear guys the first virus i had when i was younger it cleared up um I, I went back and it had cleared up on its own that's why i think i've been exposed to and um i thought cool, cool and um i just thought cool i'm good i'm good <laughs> period and when they kept writing to me i was like yeah, i ain't going i ain't going i'm fine like i think i'm fine like but um it came back so it came back where I got something else. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I think I've covered everything now. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick, um, quick information about HPV and what it is. So, and how it's spread. So HPV is the most common STI in the world with 43 million, um, people having it. Um, HPV can be gotten from having vaginal, anal, oral sex. Most people can fight the virus on their own, especially if they have a great immune system. Nine out of ten cases of people with HPV are fine because it just goes away on its own and they have no problems. A very small percentage of people, like about 10%, it, it can get worse and worse and eventually lead into cancer. There is no way to tell who has a HPV that isn't dangerous and and who is going to have a HPV that's going to develop into a into um cancer or anything dangerous um people with HPV who eventually get cancer can it can take years or even decades for it to eventually develop into that that's why women who are between the ages of 25 to 65 get regular screening um 
people with immune weak people with weak immune systems are usually people who possibly have HIV and things like that. But if you don't have HIV, you should be and you take all your your vitamins and you eat healthily and you have a low stress lifestyle, you should be able to fight the HPV virus by yourself. Sometimes as you get older, though, it might be diff- more difficult to fight it because our body isn't as quick and as smart as we get older. The best way to avoid getting HPV um, in case you clear it and you want to not get it in the future ever again is to use condoms um, every time you have sex. Um the most important one, and I've mentioned this many times in this video, is to be in a mutually monogamous relationship. And for this person who's having sex with you to be only having sex with you, that's the best way to lower your chances of getting or repeat getting HPV. Obviously, if you can get also get vaccinated, that can also help. Where can I go to get some information in regards to HPV? Um, you guys need to... Um, go to your local G- GP or call your GP to get a smear test. Um, so I'm just going to quickly describe how it works. When you go in, you have to take off your pants, off your pants, and they put they put blue 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 in your in your tin, in your hole, and they open it with a with a with a spatula. If you're a lesbian, you may struggle with that bit. It, she found my cervix but yeah they open you up and they do stuff in there but to be honest with you you, you don't feel that much pain it's actually one of the most painless procedures it's just very awkward because someone's vagina is in your their, your vagina is in someone's face and um they don't want it in their face it's not like they're like you yeah, give it to me baby i want to i want to rub it in my face nothing it's like really weird and um and she sees a lot of them so it's more it's more nervous because you just think she is my dunk uglier than the lady before. Yeah. I should ask her to rate mine out of 10 to be honest. So guys, um, if you have any more questions, maybe I'll do a part two. Um, I just told you everything I can think of now. But yeah, if, if you have any questions, I'll do a part two and just keep in your prayers. I'm sure I'll be fine, fingers crossed. But yeah, I mean, I need to be because I haven't even had a baby yet. What the fuck? So, you know, but yeah, I hope you. I hope I've helped somebody, and I hope I've also helped you guys who are scared and have stigmatized this to stop it. It's really common, um, and it just is what it is. God doesn't want us to have loads of partners, and that's why there's all these consequences. So stop being a dirty bitch. Stop being a dirty bitch. Just stick to your one person. Okay, until next time, guys. Love you. Bye. Do you know? You- you're the only um person